Hi, this is Dave Spoon. Uh, I've been joined today by the Future Music guys to talk about my studio, about production, how I got into what I do. Uh, we'll be looking at some tracks today, uh, looking at Pete Tong's and mine remix of uh, Madonna, Give It To Me, our remix of that. Uh, we'll look at At Night, which is now a couple of years old, but it's quite an important uh, track for me. It's my sort of landmark production. Uh, so we're looking at how I put that together in reason only. Uh, and also be talking about how I get some of my sounds and stuff, uh, how I do my drum programming, and we'll also take a look at uh, how I mix the track, how I get everything sounding sweet. Okay, so recently uh, Pete, Tong and I got together and did a mix of Give It To Me, which is Madonna's current single from the album. Um, we actually did two mixes. One was just like our, our usual kind of main mix with a bit of vocal in, not necessarily a vocal version. And we did a mix without any vocal at all, which was a dub. Delivered them. She was really happy with the dub because she has the final word on, on things, which is uh, fair enough. Uh, but not sure about the vocal mix. Uh, so we had to bring it back to the studio and messed about with it quite a few times. Um, I just basically ended up adding more vocal and, and she loved it, so fair enough. It's an actual proper vocal version now. Then we had to do a radio version, which isn't quite a radio edit, but um, it's a cut down version for what well, for Pete to play and a lot of other dance kind of shows to play. So kind of like a four minute version, which is what this is. So we're gonna go straight in here. I'll just gonna play the, the key bits to it and then go through you know the parts and stuff that we were given, which isn't a lot actually. Uh, anyway. What are you waiting for? Nobody's gonna show you how. Why wait for someone else to do what you can do right now? So the, the main sort of synth line there was done using the Mini Monster plugin, which looks a bit like that. Um, the Arturia Mini Moog is very good, don't get me wrong, but I get on really, really well with this. Um, and if you're someone that likes to use presets as a starting point uh, to make your sounds, I kind of found this a little bit more unique, if you like. Arturia, although they're very good, they get similar sort of presets on a lot of their stuff, I, I personally find. So I got on really well with this, programmed it, um, put all the MIDI in, and then I'll just stop it for a moment. And then actually, when it came back to, to here, to my studio, because we started Pete's, I used the uh, Mini Moog to actually reprogram the same sound, which is probably hidden behind the mic stand. Anyway, uh, so it's actually the real Mini Moog here. So I used the same MIDI that I had for this to control the Mini Moog, reprogram the sound. I've got to say the consistency between the two sounds on the plugin, the Mini Monster and the real thing are pretty close, to be honest, so it was good. Um, yeah, so once I was kind of done with the track, I bounced in the audio from the real Mini Moog, tweaked it live as well. It's sort of nice, it kind of feels a bit more real and musical and sort of organic as opposed to just programmed and drawing in automation and stuff. It, you know, I'm lucky to have one of those and it's like, that's how I use it. You know, I, I get use the plugins and then if I can recreate the sound using my hardware, that, that that's what I do. So that's the main, the lead sound here, which if I... Uh, so that's it with quite a bit of um, processing and stuff on there. The EQ, I, I do like the EQs that you get with Logic, the channel EQ. I just think it's quick, straight to the point, and you do you do get a good sound from it. So there's quite a lot, uh, quite a lot on there. Sorry, it's this one. So there you go, that's how dramatic that kind of EQ is on there. Um, I've given it a bit of a stereo spread as well. Again, using the, the kind of basic, but very good logic um, plugins that you get. Uh, using the stereo spread, because obviously the Mini Moog is mono, so just to give it a bit more of a spread in the mix. So yeah, if you can get to use some hardware, I'd definitely recommend 
you know, replacing some of your plug-in sounds with, with some, uh, some hardware. Um, so the parts anyway that we've got, we've got given a vocal only and like a little cowbell, which is like, it's like a teacup we ended up calling it, which is, uh, wow, well, really. there we go. That's it. <laughs> it's Pharrell's teacup. Um, so that's all we were given, that and the and the vocal. But that's cool. That's enough. The rest of it, Pete and I wrote together, and that's kind of what what we what we've ended up with. It's funny. Before I did this mix, I'd never really taken a look at Apple Loops and stuff. Uh, I mean, it's a great resource, especially if you're starting to write music and don't have a big sample library that kind of thing um, but we used a few bits here like the hi-hat sound the, the hi-hat loop sorry let's just stick a little loop on uh, there we go let's take up hang on a sec sorry one sec Oh, we found, Pete found this little party crowd noise in Apple Loops, which was good actually, because it found, it, it kind of, it's got that kind of party feel to the track. It's not really like big, you know, big room house track necessarily, although it, it does go off. It's kind of like a bit more kind of fun. And there's a bit of a, a side chain on that as well. I've got to find those hi-hats. Anyway, we found some hi-hats in there just to give it that real feel rather than me trying to dig them out. Um, so that's kind of it really. I mean, sometimes with remixes you get given too many parts. Sometimes you get given just a couple of bits like this because it was all very secretive, you know, at the time just before the album was released. They didn't want to let on or think about the track. They just wanted to give us, you know, the key elements and um, that's that's where we ended up anyway. So. What was the vocal like so, when you got it? Was it dry or processed? Yeah, it's just dry. I mean, it's. Um, I can go me. Don't need to catch my breath. I can go yeah, I mean, I've me. stuck quite don't a bit on there. As well, again, quite a bit of quite a bit of EQ for it to stand out in the mix because obviously you're going to get a vocal that's dry, you know, in 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 the original version, which people will know from the radio or from the album it's going to be EQ'd and sound a certain way for the original version and for our version it had to sound our way obviously so you know you've got to you got to stack things on there so yeah it's a bit of um, again the stereo spread on there um, it's a little tiny bit of delay these the camel plugins are, are great it's like one, of the, one of the best things I've got definitely those and quite a few people using them but you can do so much with them um, and stuff you know really well worth getting but yeah the vocal vocals just dry and you know you kind of have to make it fit fit with the track so yeah what about other sense and stuff on there there's is, i mean the move through the bass line there. yeah that little that little sort of uh where are we i used the sh101 actually like i didn't i just kind of did it straight away from here i didn't replace it from a from a plug-in so this is That, that's straight from the SH-101, which is like big, big brother to a 303 and a, an MC-202. So you, you get some great acidy kind of noises and stuff out of it. It's great for bass lines and stuff too. There's a bit of a reverb that's all automated in there as well. So again, that was the same thing. Um, just kind of had it running with MIDI and then just uh, recorded it in live, tweaked it live. And again, it gives you that kind of, I don't know, it just, there's something that kind of felt different about this because I was, you know, using the outboard kit, you know, it sort of came to life like a bit a bit more, you know, so yeah. What about the, um, that's kind of like a vocoded part on there early later on. Yeah, that, there, that's actually in reason. Um, I mean, there's various vocoders that are around that, that are great, but I, I the reason, uh, one is really really good um, let me just 
see that. The thing I like about Reason is, you know, anyone that's using it will be fully aware you can hit the tab key and you can do all your patching in and dragging cables about and visually it's really cool. But, you know, you really can get stuck into all the features that Propeller Head put into this like, and do so much with it. So using a vocoder isn't like you just stick a vocoder synth on it or whatever and just play it. You have to actually hook it up like it needs, you know, the carrier putting through. And um, let me just show you. So reasons obviously rewired through to to Cubase uh, to Logic to Cubase. So I was talking about Cubase earlier. Um, so his reason coming through, and that's just the vocoder, and there's actually a a string line in there as well, like a pad. So I'll take that out. So that's Madonna singing on and on and on and on, like she does in the original. And there's the vocoder vocoding. So I've got the um, the sample actually running. Where's the sample? Yes, it's, it's this one. Oh, there you go. So that's what's driving the vocoder. And then I'm just playing those chords over the top that are coming from the Reason Synth subtractor, which is giving you this. So I've kind of just played those chords and can do. So the, the, vo the vocoder is really good. It's all about kind of what you're putting through it, through it, because they've kind of done this module, which does the vocoding. It's really good as, a, as an EQ on for certain things as well. You get kind of a nice sound on certain drum sounds and whatever by using the EQ. I'll, I'll go into that in a minute. But basically, um, it's about the sound you use to get the effect. You know, I'm using the subtractor here with just a, a sawtooth. You know, that was how we did that, just chain two sawtooths together. Um, yeah, so that's how we've got this and used, used the filter on there as well. But yeah, it's definitely definitely worth using if you've got reason and you want to get that vocoder effect, you can do a hell of a lot with it. You know, I'm really, really happy with the results from it all the time. So that's the vocoder. And then again, as I mentioned, I layered a string with it as well from reason. You can get some real nice pads, like real warm analog pads still from from Reason. I mean, I could have got this from the Juno, but I was happy with the sound that I've got here anyway. And it's only in the track kind of twice, we can see here. It's a little bit here as well, but it's not a big main feature like the, the line I redid on the Mini Moog, so. So there you go. Yes, Madonna and vocoding at once. <laughs>